Hi, Gabrielle. How are you doing? Okay, good start. Great choice. Sketchbook. Definitely. I don't leave home without it. Never did. Never will. Um, boy, I'll tell you what. I mean, I, even if I'm running up to the corner to get a cup of coffee or a gallon of milk, I grab my sketchbook because you know what? You never know when that idea is going to hit. And when it does, you want to be prepared. I mean, honestly, there's times where I've just jumped in my car, run up to get a gallon of milk, grab my sketchbook, and I ended up pulling over to it. Oh, I just got this great idea. I'll pull over to the side of the road and I'll sketch it out and I'll draw it before, you know, while it's still fresh. So, yeah, I totally relate with, with the sketchbook. Okay. So, in this week's lectures, we talk about taking visual cues from the image itself to help establish the, the typographic format and also, and probably to a greater degree, the actual compositional elements and the compositional integrity of the the project okay so <clears throat> we saw that in the the uh example with the volkswagen ad remember with the log cabin in the background that wonderful video from the, the course resources so what we want to do is we want to take a look at your object and we want to kind of use that to our benefit to create this synergistic relationship between the composition and the object or the subject or the visual attributes of the object itself, okay, which is a sketchbook. For that reason, I mean, there's not a whole lot of visual characteristics in a textbook, in a sketchbook that we can borrow. But there is one main thing, and that's the shape of the textbook, um, textbook, the sketchbook. And that is that the orientation is, uh, the width is much thinner. So it's, 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 it's more of a, uh, vertical orientation than a horizontal because the sketchbook is vertically oriented, right? So that said, it makes sense to change this composition into a, uh, vertical instead of a horizontal composition, right? To mimic the shape of the page of a sketchbook, okay? That's the first thing I would like to see. I would like to see you change the orientation. The next thing, I think you've created these circles by the way that you've cropped this white background, creating a circle here, and then repeating that here, 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 and then and, and also to a higher degree in the actual placement of the images. Now, that is not a bad thing because the, the, the um, sketchbook itself, I'm trying to see this sketchbook itself. The, the sketchbook itself doesn't have any circular elements to it, unless it's a spiral. But we don't see that here. You see what I'm saying? So the circles don't, I'm not really seeing any kind of connection between the characteristics of the image and the actual um, uh, circles in the composition. Okay, so I'm going to recommend we remove those circles. And let's go ahead and, and try to duplicate the shape of the page, not only for the composition, okay, but also instead of placing these images in circles, place them in shapes that are more that are more rectangular, uh, vertical rectangular, to mimic again the shapes of the pages. So you have that one there, you have that one there, and then you have that one there, okay? You've got this image right here of the textbook, but we already have that textbook image right up here, so do we really even need this one? I think that's gonna open up some negative space and really allow you to make some good engagement between and use negative space as a design element. Right now, I think you're, you're kind of not paying attention to negative space because it seems like everything in the, in the, the composition is filled with, with a visual, uh, element. Okay. So let's remove that since we already have that. Okay. Um, I, I would not recommend justified type. I would recommend that you, uh, uh use a, a try to, to work a serif in here. So it's what would be a neat idea is to try to, uh, create serif for the headline. And oh, so if you're going to use a serif for the headline, use a sans serif for the body copy. If you're going to use a, a sans serif for the headline, use a serif for the body copy, right? That would make, that would make good sense. Um, so what I would like to see then is that when you have the orientation change, go ahead. You have your headline, left align, your body copy, your paragraph, rag, right. Okay, align it with the D in design. So you have left align, rag, right. 
Okay, that, and that's really going to help the the uh, visibility of and the readability of the, the text block. Um, the next thing I would recommend is these. There's no hierarchy in your um, uh, your captions. So what I would recommend is is to change that, reduce the size of the captions. Okay, and don't use a background. Don't don't place your your type in. in boxes okay it's it's just it does, rarely works it kind of creates a separation instead of working the, the text into the composition it creates a separation so as far as typographic hierarchy let's use an italic here but reduce the size of the of the captions so that the hierarchy goes headline body copy captions okay um and those are my recommendations so that's that's what i would say now if you have any questions at all, please feel free to let me know. I'll be glad to clarify anything. And um, if you want me to take a look at between at anything between now and Sunday, just go, go right ahead and repost. All right, Gabriella, good job. And as I said, any questions, don't hesitate. Thank you very much.